Are you ready for your next comedian? Yeah! He runs the open mic night every Saturday at Pi. Please welcome to the stage, Jacob McFadden! I fucking hope that's gonna be a lot longer of an introduction. I am not prepared. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob McFadden. Hey, hey, Jesus Christ. This is my first time at McCormick's. This is my first time at the oh, Yes, thank you. The bathrooms here have no door on the toilet. I have to take a shit. I have an immoral quandary. Do I really have to shit? Or am I okay with you seeing my dick if you walk in that direction? I'm not. It's my first time ever performing in the Cormacs. It's my first time ever performing in an Irish pub. But one time, I was performing in an Irish pub, and I had taken acid before getting on the stage. And the light seemed really cool when I got here, and now it is distracting the shit. <laughs> that one time. That one time when I did that one Irish comedy club. Hey, there's a lot of comedians here, right? Almost everybody. You ever get on the internet and convince yourself you have autism? <laughs> yeah. All that shit is very convincing. It starts off pretty simple, like, hey, do you ever drool? And then it's, do you breathe? And that shit, like, all of a sudden, I feel like I have every fucking form of autism there is. The one that gets me is, do you ever make metaphors that nobody else can understand? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. My mother dropped out of college in her first year. She said, uh, what's college like nowadays? I said, well, it's like driving an expensive sports car underneath the trailer of a semi-truck. <laughs> you guys don't get that. It's a very funny thing. It's a very smart metaphor. I have autism. <laughs> now listen, the sports car is student loans. That's my year at college. It's 24, two semesters, $48,000 of debt. The semi-truck is the first two years of $48,000 of debt, and I'm cruising along, and if I put my head up, I get decapitated. That's the metaphor! It makes perfect fucking sense! I have autism. That's what I'm learning out of this. I am fascinated by mental illness. Completely fascinated. Which is ultimately very unfulfilling. I'm also fascinated by illness in general, I love the concept of someone being terminally ill. I think that person is very lucky, very lucky, because their life has a direction. It is down, it is ending, but it's something. All right. Thank you for the awe in the crowd. I really like that. That's my favorite part, awe. I'm getting laid. Someone's very sympathetic out there. <laughs> Death stopped being so attractive to me once I realized I was too old for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> it's not really a joke, that's an observation. My wish was that I could have dreadlocks. <laughs> I'm not much of a dreamer. I just really what I wanted. How sweet would I look with dread rocks, let's be honest. Dread locks or dread rocks? Both of them. <laughs> Go to fucking every sublime concert there was. <sighs> but I, you know, being a college student's kind of fun if you like death. Because uh, you're constantly surrounded by the idea of death. Every day in a college campus is just another day to watch a teenager's dreams die. <laughs> you said this would be covered by my lungs. It's not. Yes. Fuck you, 18-year-old blonde girl from Nova. I actually had a run-in with one of these kids today. I went to go get some coffee on 4th Street in a store with no door and no sign. I walked in, and there was a young man explaining to the black guy behind the counter that uh, he wasn't sure if he was asexual or pansexual. <laughs> This went on for 10 fucking minutes while I was waiting to call. I tried to interject, by the way. I tried to interject and say, hey, let's move it along! Guy couldn't decide what kind of coffee you wanted, what kind of creamer you wanted, how much sugar you wanted. 
But my favorite part of this interaction is he said, I just have to really know someone before I can decide whether or not I'm sexually attracted to them. Which is interesting. Because I have to really know someone before I decide whether or not I'm not sexually attracted to them. <laughs> like, I'm down to fuck pretty much everyone until I hear something like, we don't use the word fat in my house. That promotes a negative body image, and I don't appreciate that. I'm not fucking you. <laughs> fat whore. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Thanks, everybody. I will think of a longer introduction next time. Thank you. Your next comedian coming to the stage, one of my personal favorites, you can see him at the Funny Bone quite often, please welcome Mr. David C. Wingfield. <laughs> and for all the teachers that you so reluctantly applauded for. Teachers! Applaud. Okay, two people listen to me. This is not... This is like home again. <laughs> Your next comedian coming to the stage recently did very well at the Richmond Funny Book Clash of the Comics, one of my personal favorites. Please welcome to the stage, Israel! Come on, call me some what's happening. <laughs> what's happening? God damn, I said what's happening, shit! You know, sometimes I just think to myself, you know, I'm getting tired of playing toys, huh? The chemicals are getting to my brain and I'm starting to think of a lot of weird shit because I clean shit, so yeah, it just goes right in hand in hand. You know, sometimes, you know, I thought I was thinking to myself, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the world of love, love is like a bank, you know, you gotta make deposits. You know, so one day, you can make a withdrawal to get the draws, you know what I'm saying? That, that, I, I'm, I'm working on that joke, so just bear with me on that one. I'm working on that one, as the sounds can tell. Uh, you know, my daughter, you know what I'm saying, has a problem chewing her food. Uh, you know, I don't know what the fuck is her problem is. She's three years old, but I'm like, you know, you gotta get that shit together, you know, because she'll sit there and eat a piece of chicken, but she won't swallow it for like, you know, an hour later. I'm like, shit. I hope she doesn't do this when she gets older, because we really got a problem then. <laughs> shit. Come on, y'all, that was funny. funny. <laughs> Swallow, I mean, come on, come on, y'all, come on. I don't know what it is about Walmart. Walmart seems to have a lot of handicapped people. I don't have a problem with that, but it just seems like they like the, you know, they like to the hide the, the guy with the bad leg to push the carts in. You know what I mean? That's kind of fucked up. I mean, you got one dude with a bad leg just, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, no, that's not right. Get him a motorized cage or some shit to put that shit in. You know what I'm saying? The thing gets me about some people in Walmart is that sometimes, they, they used to the motorized little ride around thing. They really, they really don't need it. You know what I'm saying? They really don't need it. They just be fucking lazy. They don't feel like getting up and walking and getting the cereal. They want to ride around and shit and hit people in the ankles and shit. That's what they fuck the they want to do. You know what I'm saying? You know, and as long as that person, you go to Walmart, that, you know, it's 20 or less, and this motherfucker got, well, you know, 38 items and shit, and then get an attitude, you know what I'm saying? If you look at them kind of funny and shit, you know, I don't understand that either. I don't understand that. But, uh, you know, sex is a powerful bond. Uh, that bonds all of us. Next to God, you know, pussy is like very, you know, that's, come on, I mean, that's, that's powerful. It's, it's so powerful that a dog would jump through a window just to get the scent of it. I mean, that's how powerful this shit is. It really is. I mean, I've seen a, I've seen a dog jump through a fucking window just to, just to get some. But, I mean, and the thing that made me think about it was, I was watching the movie Ray Charles, you know, with Jamie Foxx and everything, and it's a scene in the movie, you know, that really gets me. It really brings it home for me. You know, it, it, you know, you know, I'm watching the movie, you know that song, you know the night time, baby, night and day, it is the right time, night and day. You know that part, right? Ray Charles is scratching and itching himself, like, you know what I'm saying? But that's not really the part that gets me, it's the girl that's singing with him. She's like, baby! I mean, come on, let's uh, admit, a woman's not gonna holler like that unless you put some dick down. I mean, come on, let's just be real with that chick. I mean, Ray Charles blind and can play, was putting dick down. I mean, I'm like, damn, what is he doing to her? And then she killed herself. I'm like, if sex is not powerful, I don't know what the fuck is. <laughs> it really is a powerful thing. But anyway, we ain't on this one right here. You're fucking off the stage. Anybody just, sometimes you just 
just your body feels sore, like you just want to go home and soak in a tub and have some salt. I mean, that's what I feel like right now. I'm like, shit. Sometimes, I mean, I'm old school. So I'm getting older too. Just sometimes I need my back rub, my dick suck. That's all I want. I mean, that's not too much to ask. It really is. You know, sometimes you just want your back rub, your dick suck, and go to sleep. I mean, that's the way you feel sometimes. You know? But, um, I went to the club with some Jamaicans. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, Jamaicans, you can't outdance these motherfuckers. I'm trying to tell you, you can't outdance them. Just sit your ass down. White, black, I don't give a damn who you are. I sit your ass down. Because, you know what? And you'll sit there dancing, and all of a sudden the music will come on, and it'll turn, and the Jamaican guy will start feeling this shit, and he'll pull the pull. I'm like, oh, okay. Pull the pull. And all of a sudden he'll go, I'm like, oh, shit. This motherfucker was having a seizure, and he was doing it on rhythm. I'm like, I have a seizure on rhythm. I'm like, boom, the boom. I'm like, oh, shit. And then after that, I went home and got some hot fries and shit and called it a night. My name is Israel, God bless. <laughs> Israel! <laughs> Back to the stage. Run, my man. Thank you. Give it up for Israel, everybody. <laughs> and I'm waving goodbye to all the people who are leaving. Are you ready for your next comedian? Yes, ma'am. A little more enthusiasm, please. Are you ready for your next comedian? Woo! And don't call me ma'am. Your next comedian coming to the stage, a good friend of mine, please welcome Rima! Hello. Are you out there? And he is looking forward. <laughs> I just want to start as awkward as possible, so there you have it. Success! Yes! Success in many forms. Um, I'm in a relationship, doing this relationship thing. It's pretty cool, you know. I think I, I, I've learned to love my relationships, man. I've been in some awkward fucking relationships, man. I was in a relationship with this one chick who was like bipolar. And the problem was, she didn't transition well. Like one time, like, we were arguing, and she was like, get the fuck out. And I was like, no. And she jabbed me twice. And after she finished hitting me, she was like, oh, yeah, now fuck me now. I was like, that was not a good transition, bitch. <laughs> we are not going to fuck after this one. <laughs> I'm out of here, man. I don't know about you, but I see Tyson by the ear. I'm not going to wait to see what's next after those jabs. <laughs> I got to let go. I'll date this, this fat chick one time. She was really misleading. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would call her on the phone, and you know, she had her sexy voice going. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, baby, I'm coming home, and you know what I'm saying? Get everything ready. She's like, oh yeah? Yeah, don't get excited like that. And I was like, yeah, baby, when I come home, I'm a rocket. You're gonna do it, dude. She's like, yeah. Oh yeah, for real? I thought she was getting real excited. So I'm like, yeah, baby, I'm gonna rock your world, yeah. She was like, what? So you're not gonna stop at McDonald's? I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is not love, what we're going through here. <laughs> One time I was getting it, you know, I was, I was going in, I was getting it, you know, I had it from the back, I was doing my thing, I started to do moves. You know, when you're getting it, you start to do little moves and shit. So I was doing my little moves and shit, and she was making her noise, mm, um, um. So when I went to pull her hair, I noticed when she looked back, she had like mustard sauce and shit. Like the bitch was sitting there eating a ham sandwich the whole time, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm doing something. <laughs> She's fucking picking out. <laughs> that was a project. <laughs> oh. oh man. I had something else. I don't know. I recently went over to my friend's house and um, I thought he was broke, but he was actually a college student. And the crazy thing is, like, he started calling shit that wasn't furniture, furniture. Like, he called the carpet furniture. <laughs> he just sit over here on furniture. I was like, really? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I think I started awkward, and I'm going to end awkward. <laughs> it's one of those nights, man. Oh, man. Uh, let's go with an old faithful. So, uh, I have a baby at home, a nine month old baby. I love her to death, but uh, she's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch crazy, man, you know? <laughs> One time, you know, I was sitting in the room, 
I, I'm on my phone, you know, I'm my own world, I'm on my phone. She started to crawl up my side or whatever. And it's like, you know, okay, that's cool. She gets around my neck and just a fat ass piece of drool comes down, like I almost drowned. <laughs> there was one, you know one of those drools that you can't touch, it's like blah! <laughs> so when she hit that, I was like, oh my god, what the hell? I tried to do like this, and then like she like dodged my hand, I just like the matrix. She was like, <laughs> like she slapped the fuck out of me like Mississippi pimp slap. Like <laughs> I thought I owed her some money afterwards. I don't know. <laughs> like, you no, know, I, I I did six years in the Marines, you know. I did a lot of training. So my first thought after the hit was to protect myself. So after she hit me, I just like I reached back and I DDT her. Bam! Like <laughs> right on the on the bed. That was it happened real fast, okay? And I, you know what? You guys are really awkward with sound. <laughs> that bitch had it coming. Don't feel for the baby now. <laughs> no, but this, she like did some thug shit. Like she turned over and did two push-ups. Then she started to get up. You know what I'm saying? And she, it wasn't no baby laugh. It wasn't ha 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 goo goo. This bitch like ha 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 ha. I was like, what? She was like, that is. <laughs> she started doing this shit. I was like, I don't know. She took her onesie off, I left. I was like, fuck this shit. The bitch started screaming YOLO while I had my back turned. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> that got awkward. <laughs> anyway, that's my time. Thank you for listening to my bullshit. Put your hands together for Reba, everybody. Show us some love.